it's Jeff Allen off the Gridiron. Welcome back. And I'm at the beautiful Grundy Lake Provincial Park. We just had a major storm blow through last night and that prompted the topic for today's uh, little talk. And that is all about tent pegs. We had tents and tarps and the entire park was on alert trying to uh, fasten down these pieces of equipment safely and properly. And that prompted, uh, like I said, today's topic because what I'm seeing is not everybody has uh, the same tent pegs or equipment or knows how to use them or improvise and make their own. Stick around. Hey guys, welcome back. Jeff Allen off the green iron. Okay, folks, well, as I said today, today's topic is all about the tent pegs, and traditionally, these are some of the familiar tent peg styles we see. Uh, quite often, the, uh, the metal stake, aluminum stake, might come in this configuration where it's a, the round stock with a hook on the end. Sometimes you'll also see the molded plastic or polypropylene tent pegs, and they also come in various sizes. Now, ten pegs, uh, these are not the only types. There's very many, many designs and styles out there. But I want you to be aware of why they're designed the way they are and what the, the primary purpose of that. So something like this is convenient for storage. You can store many of them together. Uh, they, they do all have a similar length. This is a very functional length for most soil types. But today, certainly in this part, it's a very sandy soil and the round bar does not lend itself well to holding down any kind of guy lines or tarps or tents, uh, certainly under pressure and upward force. And they, you'll often see them pull out or often twist around and uh, kind of come loose. The plastic peg is, uh, again, <laughs> very good, very lightweight. However, you do run into the problem of them sometimes being brittle. Uh, and fragile, but they do, uh, <clears throat> by and large, uh, work very well in softer grounds. Uh, but when you get into rocky or gravel, or, uh, more gravel-based uh, substrates for sites, this can often break, and you can run into a real problem this way. <clears throat> Another compromise, although giving away some size, is uh, a peg like this, where it has the hole in the top, uh, obviously the large hook in that kind of T-bar style, which really lends itself well to not only getting into the ground, but holding itself, embracing itself out on the various substrates and giving you a great deal of retention for that, uh, either that tarp or guy line or peg, uh, tent uh, loop or whatever it may be. But without these, or certainly if you have some that are not uh, doing the job, sometimes you're a little short on pegs, that's kind of what I wanted to bring your attention to. So what we can do is quite often you can obviously find and fabricate your own tent peg with not too much effort. <clears throat> a very quick sharpening of a stick is a very uh, easy task. <clears throat> and something like that would suffice. Uh, upon entering the ground, if you want to knock off any of the, the other knobs, and you can actually st strip it clean of bark if you like. <clears throat> now if you're using dry wood, uh, the bark sometimes stays on a little, a little harder to pull off. If it's green wood you're using, um, I may suggest, if time's not a factor, that you could actually uh, almost dry them out next to the fire. Uh, on top of the fire grate. Now this one has a particular Y branch. Uh, you may choose to leave that on or not. And again, a point at this end is not necessary, nor is a hole. But I wanted to uh, 
show you. you know, even something something as quick as and as simple as that. Now, for pounding it in, you don't want a point to push against, nor do you want just the, the raw flat edge of a branch. You do want to round it off slightly, and uh, that really prevents it from splitting out. So if you go around the outside edge of the peg like that, that provides a really great surface to hammer down. Uh, and again, you could probably baton that into the uh, into the soil, tie your, tie your rope out around that, and that would provide you a really great tent peg. The length as well really helps get it down deep and hold, um, again, depending on the substrate and the material that you're hammering it into, uh, you can decide what length of peg works best for you. Another option is uh, if you don't have pegs or you're, you're, you, know, you don't want to harvest the, the environment around you, which we're not allowed to do in provincial parks, we're to leave them as nature intended, either dead on the ground or on the trees. Uh, but what you may buy is the, the wood or kindling from the perhaps the main park office. So even with a large chunk, you can either baton or use your axe to split it into smaller pieces, almost like you would uh, perhaps make uh, use for kindling. And again, that's quite quite thick and uh, maybe a little too too large to, to go on the ground. But again, depending on the substrate of the, the, the site, you can always whittle it down a little bit. <coughs> Pretty, pretty short order. I'm throwing the chips now. This is actually really uh, green birch. And again, depending on how I'm using it, I can create more of a one, one pointed end designated for the kind of in the ground. And if you're having trouble taking big chunks. There's various ways you can do it. Number one, you want to make sure everything around you is free and clear of any kind of push and follow through. But you can also hold it against your knee like so and do the pulling of the material. And this way it provides a very strong, uh, you're, not, you're, you're not using your wrist control. Another technique is a back, you know, using your back muscles to shave, shave the point this. From there, what we want to do is you almost want to carve what's called a seven notch, number seven notch. And you make a stop cut, a vertical stop cut, straight down into the wood, and then just a forward cut up to that point. What happens is you start creating that notch or space that the rope will be able to bind to. So I keep repeating the process of doing a forward cut, Stop cut, that cuts the shaving off. And after a few strokes, you can start to see the start of that. Now, that peg is very big and bulky, uh, certainly not something I want to, uh, to take from place to place necessarily. The profile of it, I can continue taking that down to be something a little, a little more suitable for job. But again, sitting around a campfire, taking a few minutes, maybe purifying water after a portage and you just realize you could use a couple extra pegs. There's nothing to whittling out a couple of new, new pegs and they, uh, depending on the size of the material and if you like them or not, you can take them from site to site, something like that. Very short order represents you know, the peg you're originally using. Now again, you can continue to work on the, the seven notch. You can round it, take it right around the sides if you like. But that allows, that gives it a great, great retention there for the rope or your guy lines to uh, nail that down. Now, I was, as I was saying with the top, if you don't do anything to leave the top as it is, that straight cut, what often happens is with that pounding, that uh, not only mushroom over the top, but it can drive the uh, kind of the 
energy down through the grain and ship your seven notch right off. So quite often I go around the top just like I would with a spindle on a bow drill and round it off a little bit. Just kind of chew my way around the top and just keep rotating around something like that. That will still allow you to either baton or hammer it down into soil and provide a great deal of retention. Now, <laughs> Included, if you're really trying to uh, get something held down in place, you can run a series of pegs in line with a guide line down. So you can peg it down to this peg and then further extend another rope into this peg. And you can almost create a daisy chain of pegs if a uh, very strong retention of the soil will not allow that, that holding power for that peg. Another option is when you have extreme uh, soft soil where it has very little in terms of uh, retention of the, of the peg and the peg keeps falling out or coming out. Sometimes it could be uh, super wet or sandy, perhaps even a snowy uh, sort of environment. You can make a, a different kind of peg and again coming back to that that original block of wood we may have started with at our campfire or a half round, any kind of a log you might see. You might be able to cut a log with your, your saw and then split it, baton a piece off, and you're looking for a narrow, flat, blade-like piece like this. Now what you can do is, uh, again, we don't want a very skinny and narrow profile. We want the width. We want the width. Well, we're going to sharpen it into a point and that allows that penetration into the soil or into the material, the sand, etc. And what I'm thinking of is, is sometimes at the sandy beach, this might be an idea, not that you have always wood available, um, but uh, very flat, what you're looking for, that very flat profile. Now we're going to come in and make a, uh, a notch around the top on both sides. So we're going to wear in, we're just kind of cut, cut it that Again, that seven notch in, cut it in on both sides. This we're going to come across from it as well. This is going to go. There we go. Take that stop cut. Sometimes you can do it with a little saw if you wanted to. What we're doing is creating that natural bite that surface, that edge where the rope can wrap around. Now. Very quick. Again, we want to get this structured, kind of anchored down. Our substrate does not allow for some of our pegs. For example, if all we had was the skinny metal pegs, it doesn't doesn't work all that well. Now we have something like this. Okay. There we go. A little much larger there. Now we can take that and tie our rope around that, drive it down in the ground, and you would have this whole blade of material, much like a shovel, okay, pushing and providing that, that action against this wide, wide peg. And something like this you could put down into, uh, you could stack them up, put them in the, into the uh, in your bag, and that would be uh, something that would be pretty pretty good pretty good and work really well on the ground all right I just wanted to show you a couple of those things and uh, <clears throat> allow you some options for how to peg down your gear uh, when you're in an unfamiliar environment we looked at uh, how to make the different kind of different homemade pegs and such uh, as compared to some of the purchased ones but there is many of them out there this allows you that um, that option to explore some some other peg designs do it by hand. Thanks for watching. Jeff Allen off the Great Iron. If you haven't already done so, smash that subscribe button. We'll see you in another video. Enjoy your adventures.